Last month, we talked about how to mesh a fluid simulation using VDB operations. Now I'd like to take that one step further and talk about how to eliminate stray particles and jittering when you go to mesh a fluid simulation. Again, this is more of a advanced to intermediate topic, so if you're a beginner, check out my beginner-friendly stuff. But let's use the waterfall scene that we had last time to explore those two things. So first of all, here we have a waterfall and we have a lot of these stray particles, these droplets flying high up in the air. Now, sometimes you want these droplets, but oftentimes you want to create a separate particle simulation just to spit out those droplets and have more control over that motion. Right now, if I was to, let's say, convert this into polygons, what we'll find is that some of these droplets may not be so ideal. It can sometimes get a bit blobby. Sometimes with things like this, you don't want these guys flickering or uh, losing control. So how can we eliminate these stray particles? As before, let me illustrate the main idea and then we'll go ahead and do it. So we have these particles and they are going crazy. Now, when we go to rasterize these particles using the meshing technique that we did last time, so we're using that volume rasterization, we want to tell the volume rasterize that the P scale on these stray guys is really, really low. Maybe the P scale here is 0.0. 0, 1, whereas normally something along the main body can be, let's say, 15, or something higher, right? How can we do that? Well, we're going to use a bit of vex, and what we'll do is we'll use a function called near points. What that function does is it causes these particles to look around and find other nearby points based off of a specific radius. So it's like imagine drawing a sphere around a specific point, it's trying to find other points, and if it does find them, then it includes their point number into an array that stores that point's ID. So the nice thing about this is as we're looking for those other points, we're increasing the length of that array. And if we use another function called len, and this function measures the length of that array, we can use that len to multiply against the base p scale value. So as an example, if we take this main point right here and we run the nearby points function, it may come back with one or two nearby points. So the length of that array might be one or two points. Again, that gets multiplied to the p scale. So if we do that, the p scale of the point is going to be very low compared to, let's say, this point right here. As this guy looks around, he's going to find all kinds of points. So the number of entries in the array is going to go up to, let's say, a maximum of 10 entries. So let's go ahead and just say that this guy found up to 10 nearby points. The len function will return 10, we multiply that times p scale, and this area is 10 times as thick as a particle that went rogue. Another great thing about this technique is that in areas where the particles are really bunched up together, it's going to make the water deeper, or it's going to expand out the water because the p scale got much larger. So that's also a really nice uh, side effect to this particular technique. Okay, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Let's now build this in VEX. Create a point wrangle. I always like starting with the main function that I'm trying to use. In this case, that's going to be the near points function. And if we take a look at our ingredients, press F1, we need an array. We need the geometry, the position, the maximum distance to search from, and then the maximum number of points to list within the array. So in this case, going through inputs number zero, that's our first input, at P for position. Max distance, let's create a channel floats. 
And I believe this might be a float distance. Looks like it is, yep. We'll call this our max dist. And the max number of points will be an integer. So channel integer. And we will call this our max points. Okay, all of that needs to get stored within an integer variable. So to create a variable array, let's say int and we will say gather near points. And then at the end of that, do the square brackets. That's now equal to the function. Let's go ahead and press this icon. And we now have these parameters. So the maximum distance, let's say 0.5 for right now. The maximum number of points is going to be 10. All right. Now the points are looking around and finding nearby points, storing that in the array. The next thing is to measure how many entries we have in that array. So again, we do that through the len function. So again, highlight that, press F1. We basically just need to bring in the array. So that is gather near points. Once we have that, Let's make another variable that we can use to multiply against p scale. Eventually, p scale is going to be a float attribute. So we could try to say float p scale mult, and we can try to do this. And then finally, we say that at p scale times equals the p scale mult. Okay, awesome. And as we can see here, if we copy the points to just a small little section, we can see that we are in fact downsizing those particles, which are further away from the main mesh. So that's really good. If you want to push this further, then what we can say is that the maximum number of points is 15. And we can also multiply that against an additional P scale uh, multiplier. So you do that and it will basically increase the difference between the size of the main particles along the fluid mesh and these outliers right here. Now at a certain point, they get so small that the rasterize doesn't pick them up. And so it essentially removes them from your scene if they get too far out on their own, which is exactly what we want. Just to see a before and after, this is before and now this is after. So we've greatly reduced those outlier points. And if you want to even get rid of more of them, you can just add a bit more filtering right here, and that'll really get rid of those outliers even more. If you're ever interested in one-on-one -on -one professional consultations or mentorships that are designed to help you reach your Houdini goals much more quickly, then check out CG Forge Academy. At CG Forge, you can find this service plus hours of tutorials and videos and quick tips that are all designed to be thorough, simplified, and straight to the point. Thanks for watching. I hope this is useful and have a great day.